What can we learn from old detective stories when we're trying to solve current mysteries in the social sciences? What process is most likely to get us to discover new research insights? And how can we test theories based on evidence that we still need to collect? At the University of Chicago's Center for Spatial Data Science, we have developed a story map that tackles these questions by taking the example of Sherlock Holmes and, more specifically, of the adventure of the Six Napoleons. In this story map, we examine the problem that both Sherlock Holmes and Inspector Lestrade face, as well as the mystery involved in it. The main question is, why is somebody breaking into homes in order to smash Napoleon busts? Lestrade has an idea. He thinks someone is obsessed with Napoleon and hates him so much that they're destroying his busts. But Sherlock starts paying close attention to the circumstances surrounding each of the crimes and makes a couple of observations. First, busts are being destroyed near lights. Second, all of the smashed busts are coming from the same batch. Faced with these elements, Sherlock rejects Lestrade's hypotheses. For Sherlock, there's something going on with these particular busts which he sets out to discover. In order to explain why they're being destroyed, he asks, what do the smashed busts have in common that's different from the other busts? As he's developing his own hypotheses, another home is broken into and the Napoleon bust inside it gets smashed too. But this time, an Italian man named Venucci is found dead on sight, which reminds Sherlock of an unsolved crime from years ago that involved an Italian maid also named Venucci. Inspector Lestrade now thinks that this is a mafia crime and that the murder is probably some sort of revenge, but this does not explain the role that the busts could have played in it. By incorporating new information in order to update their hypotheses, both Sherlock and Lestrade are exercising an abductive kind of reasoning that goes back and forth between theory and data. However, Lestrade is once again creating hypotheses that make it impossible to distinguish cases in the outcome of interest and that generate no new expectations, all of which prevents him from excluding other alternatives or testing if his explanation is plausible. For Sherlock, the offender is after something that is hidden inside at least one of the busts. His hypothesis, then, needs to be tested, and he does that through the expectations that the hypothesis produces. After inquiring about the bust-making process, Sherlock finds out that the busts come from a batch of six and that only two of them are left. As soon as he finds out about this, he sets up what we call a quasi-natural experiment, which allows him to distinguish between rival hypotheses of why busts are being destroyed. If he's wrong, then nothing will happen with those particular busts. But if he's right, then they will continue to be destroyed until the criminal finds what they are after. And it turns out that he's right. He believes that of the two homes where the Napoleon busts are located, the closest one to central London will get attacked. While spending the night outside of that home, someone shows up to break into the house and gets arrested, but there are no signs of anything hidden inside that bust. The day after, Sherlock buys the remaining bust from its owner, smashes it, and finds the black pearl of the Borgias inside it, which had disappeared years ago in connection with the Italian maid named Venucci. In this way, Sherlock is proven to be correct after starting with a question that distinguishes groups in the outcome of interest, going over the data, and testing the expectations of his hypotheses. We can emulate this kind of abductive reasoning in the social sciences. If you would like to see an application of this framework to an actual scientific problem, check out the links below for another British example of how we can get explanatory insights in the social sciences, while also using our very own software to mirror the analysis of cholera outbreaks of the 19th century. Let us know if you have any feedback!